outer orange. Gamers, hard gamers, welcome in to another video out our orange here. And today we're going to be discussing the events that I went to this past weekend. I mentioned my other video. Here it is. This is the video. This is the follow up. Oh my gosh, here we are. Whoa. Anyway, so let's get to it. I'm going to pretty much talk about the event, talk about my placing, kind of talk about what I took, why I took it, etc. I'll probably have some videos playing in the background. I do have some footage of some of this stuff and maybe some photos. So stay tuned for that as we go on to the video. Anyway, so I, this past weekend, we had kind of like a special event here in the location that I'm at. It is called Crow's Nest. That is right. So you heard it, Crow's Nest. So essentially it is literally Crow, or known as Antonio, uh, who does Crow's Nest now and then. Um, he is part of Triple Sleeve and all this stuff. I brought up Antonio quite a lot just because like he's you know, pretty prevalent in the community, especially here in the location that we are at. He's pretty known uh, for, to be a good player and just he's been he's been playing the game for a while and also being part of Triple Sleeve and all that stuff. He's got the jersey and everything, you know, just the, the whole package, the whole package, right? So anyway, so he's been doing these kind of crow's nest things for probably a little bit over a year now. So pretty much these are special events. If you can make it, you, we do, we, the, the, the one we did recently was at Level Up Games and pretty much there's the prizes and usually extra stuff on top of that. You can enter and you can be in the top eight and there is a pot, so like to get the one we just had was a four hundred dollar pot anime figures being thrown in there's rally there there's raffles there's all just all this little stuff crow does pretty much for the community and just pretty much just there it is considered like more competitive than like our normal loco scene that we go to because we do also all play like at our locals uh, events and stuff like that but these are considered like a little like a, pretty much like a, a little bit of a step notcher but anyway, so we just had it. Um, I entered in with High Winter Prism and I got sixth place uh, with High Winter Prism. Just barely kind of made it in. I was actually kind of struggling a little bit with the deck. So, but we had a lot of, I'll have the, the kind of the, the, the pie chart somewhere around here of pretty much everything that was taken. But we had a lot of, we had like four Prism players and we had two Musketeer players. And then we had two Jets, two Gavriels, two Dukes, two Messiahs. And we had some other ones which was Sharon Rui, uh, Garafia, Luard, Reindeer, I guess that's pure Reindeer, yes. And then Shuryuki, Malkith, and then we got MLB, Hamski, Gurgit, Night Rose, Isabel, Dauntless, Dikeyser, Rising Nova. Those are pretty much all the different decks that people took and all that stuff. And yeah, and then our winners, or winner, our winners were pretty much first place was Duke, and second place we had Astro Poets, third place was Rising Nova, fourth place was Prism Pure, fifth place was Malkith, sixth place was me with Prism Highlander, seventh place was Huluard, and eighth place with Hamski. And I actually just realized that it's one of everything. We literally had, we didn't have like, oh, sorry, I guess Prism is the only one, but they were different decks. They're, those two are pretty different. Um, from my understanding at least. So that was pretty much kind of the results and kind of how it went, but I'm gonna go and give you kind of like my perspective of like how it went for me and all that stuff. Overall, the event was fun. Um, it lasted kind of a long time, like longer than I expected to. And this isn't this isn't like a complete thing like that. I just was expecting to be like a three, four hour event and it, I felt like it went longer than that. But anyway, so pretty much what we did was we had five rounds of Swiss and then you go to top eight. And in top eight, we did just pretty much brackets like top eight into top four into the finals and stuff like that. And we were going to do best of three for the last two people, pretty much go the people that are trying to get first and second but sadly we ran out of time so we actually couldn't do that but regardless um for my brackets my first game was against neo nectar actually and i got very lucky like very lucky my i had a drive check of what i like before they're like super lethal turn they went first and they had a pretty aggressive first turn but you know um with neo nectar and their current legion buddies they go they they're even better when they're going like when they, when, they, when you're on grade three so they went to their thing they kind of pushed me pretty far i was i was in the best position but then i went i rode up to prison uh, I got my vert, all this stuff, and then I swing and I go PG into a normal unit, into a PG essentially. So I had two perfect guards in hand. So pretty much I was just set uh, after that point. So they tried to kill me. They actually had like a ton of crits on all their Vanguard, their rear guard stuff, because everything was just like adding up every single trigger, just like stacked like crazy. On top of the fact that they recycled triggers back to deck off of the Legion skill and all this stuff, I PG'd everything and they lost. And it was just very unfortunate for them. Round two, I was facing Duke on camera. We, we there was a recording of us facing each other on camera and this one was very difficult uh this is very difficult so uh i've actually faced this deck before and i've actually yet to beat it uh, i usually lose to this every time i face it just because the aggro is just so insane it's kind of hard to go around it sometimes but pretty much uh, if you guys know how duke works at four damage they get a a normal drive like their normal thing and then they restand they get a triple drive so they get like massive hand and that's just pretty much annoying but uh the duke player actually runs a little extra tech it's called palinor so they'll usually go they'll They'll usually attack with their rear guards, attack with Duke, attack with Duke again, attack with their rear guards, and then they'll ride Palinor on top of that. And that will usually close out games. And I actually 
as per usual, I always do this every because I there's I I barely face Duke, um, and whenever I do face it, I always remember about the skill when it's activating. I'm always like, oh yeah, that's right, Palinor exists. Always forget about that skill. I actually almost won the match. If I had landed one extra crit, I would have probably won the match. But unfortunately, I couldn't I couldn't kill him fast enough. Like he he, he was able to come back. He had I crippled his hand pretty ha pretty roughly, like pretty like pretty badly. But if I had if I had just more crit, I think I think they were dead. I had him at four damage pretty much towards like the end here and I had a pretty fat hand and I went a crit blank blank and I put the crit on one of the rears I think I put it on, on Rosa or clear put it on one of them and then the other one was just like 50k but just straight one damage and I knew in, and I knew in their hand I, I didn't know if they had Duke but I knew for a fact that they had a Percival in hand so I knew if they were to ride Duke and if I were to give them another counter blast that would be bad so I swung with the one with the crit on it and of course they guarded it and then I passed turn I did not give them access to another CB because if I did then they would have had the Duke restand and they would have had the Percival which would have been another Excel marker and another unit on the board so I was like yeah screw that I just passed turn and I was hoping that I would survive off of just that but unfortunately <laughs> they landed three fronts I think out of their five drive checks and if they landed actually one front less I would have survived but because they landed an extra front I just it was just nothing I could do I was actually I think like 10k guard short so literally if there was one less front I actually would have been perfectly fine three which was against Chrono Jet but it was different Chrono Jet this was uh, bind chrono jet so they were playing the normal chrono jet engine but they were also playing the bind acceleration engine where they pretty much get an extra turn and all this stuff it's actually very scary if they go first like it's actually like an otk uh essentially it's like an otk on on that once they get to grade three essentially you literally can't you usually can't guard it especially if they go first because pretty much what he does is he rides jet he goes first he does all his binding stuff and then he has an extra turn and you're still on grade two this entire time by the way and if he gains you heal guard by the way it doesn't matter because if turn resets you actually lose all that heal guard power as well it's, it's pretty annoying um but he bricked on against me and he g assisted and he just didn't get a chance to catch up and by the time he did catch up and do all his buy stuff i already had like a 12 card hand and i'm a prism player doing prism player things with my highlander stuff and i'm q tiring and all this stuff it just didn't matter and we went into game four so then I faced Luard. Uh, the Luard was a pretty close-ish match, but I, I can't. All the time I had, can't remember exactly what happened. They, I believe they even went first. But I think I think at the end I had enough to just deal with all their stuff. Like there, I didn't I didn't feel as pressured by them fast enough, and I just kind of kept Q tiring, kept Pearl sistering, kept Q tiring, kept Pearl sistering, and I just ended up winning the game. It was close though. It was close though. They just didn't have enough to guard. I think like one more attack, and I, I think if they did guard that attack, I might have been in the danger zone. But my hand was like huge. I had like a 15 card hand against them. I really had nothing to fear. Uh, I think I healed at some point too, so I was just like at a really good spot. But it was like pretty neck and neck. I just don't remember at any point feeling in danger. At least with that one, I have faced the same Blue Arc player in the past, and it definitely felt like a little bit more scary. But this one in particular, I wasn't—I wasn't too scared. I also know they didn't hit their uh, bats in time, and I was watching their soul like the entire—I was watching the soul and drop like the whole time because that's like the biggest thing. Because my my thing is, can they bat me this turn? And if they can, do I have enough guard for it? Essentially, and that's like the biggest fear. But overall, still a really awesome game, really fun. GGs to that. And then game five went in, which was against a prison player. That game. I bricked like crazy. <laughs> I I literally denied uh, the prison player as much as I could. Like I actually didn't swing with my Vanguard purposely so I wouldn't give him the search on on grade two with the with the Rosa. I was trying to push him back, which it did help, but I didn't see my stuff in time. I was just in this awkward position where I just I just had like a bunch of normal units, but they weren't really doing me much. They were just kind of existing and it wasn't enough to push and pretty much I just ended up losing. I also never healed and I had all four heals in my deck and literally I looked at my cards like the next card was a heal. So if I had healed, I actually think I had a chance of winning. I did go second, which already kind of stinks because, uh, you know, Prism doesn't do much on their grade three turn, but they do at least start stacking their hand like crazy, which is why I denied the Rosa search. But at the same time, there's only so much I can do in that situation. I think if I that would have been okay i would have been able to push i actually was holding the pearl sisters uh by the time by the time it was their turn i had the pearl sisters because i actually drove check my other ones so there is a chance i would have came back because they were at a pretty good spot in the damage where if i start pearl sistering him there he 
actually would have started losing his hand or crippling his hand really badly, which I think would have secured me the game. But sadly, I didn't see any heals. I didn't see any heal guardians early. There was nothing I could do against like the, the early aggressions. And then I somehow bubbled into top eight from then on out because the only two people I lost to were pretty much the winners of the game. Like I lost to the guy who won the whole event, which was the Duke player. And then, and he was going undefeated the entire time. And then I faced the prison player who only lost to the Duke player. So I ended up actually just barely making it in. I was very surprised. I was legit buying set four cards. Like no joke. I was like, I was like doing my own thing. I was like playing, I was looking at overdress cards. I was buying stuff. And then, and then, and then Crow just says my name. And I'm like, wait, wait, that's me. That's me. Wait, oh, oh, I'm in top eight. Oh my God. I was very surprised. I was expecting to be in top eight, but because, because the person I lost to was undefeated, I guess it just, it just, it just, just barely got me in. So I ended up being in top eight and my top eight was actually against Spectral Duke again. And that game was actually really interesting. I hit all my searches. I got like all my pieces. I had like this amazing and beautiful solid. I was ready. I was ready to win and just be successful, successful because my, my, I went second, but my turn, my, my, all my turns were so well done. Like I hit all my searches. I hit everything. I hit my Nectarius, all this stuff, but I had like no triggers in my hand except for like two and I hit no triggers as well. And then when I went to my vert turn, I literally went triple drive and I go normal unit, normal unit, normal unit. I had everything in my hand to kill, but I had no survival. So when, when he went into Duke, like the second time and just generated all these Excel markers and just had this big fat board. And then he hit some fronts on top of that. I hit literally no defenses and I lost the game. So it was very unfortunate because I, my hand was stacked. I had a huge hand, but it was all like 5k, 10k guards and all my triggers, except for like three were in deck. So it was very unfortunate. I really needed like a defense or something. And I just saw nothing that entire game, even though I did see all the stuff I needed to win. I didn't see all the stuff defensively to survive. It was very unfortunate. So I lost that game and pretty much that ended me in sixth place. So it was pretty cool. It was pretty fun. Um, I also, we had some other people playing. Um, if you notice by the top eight, we actually had a very interesting top eight. There was, so fun fact in the top, in the top eight Swiss rounds, the two people that are undefeated was one was the Spectral Duke player I'm just talking about, but the second one was actually Malik. Malik, the Angel Feather Malik was, which is yellow by the way. So I'll have a little thingy somewhere around here for him, but he was going undefeated as well. Like literally like he was just, it was crazy. Like all of us were like going like, oh my God, Malik is a top, is, is, Malik is undefeated. It was insane stuff. But then I hear he's like literally going undefeated. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. It's even funnier because I he him and I have been testing this entire time time like we have been testing every single day preparing figuring out how to deal with prism matches how to deal with gabriel matches um i was telling him some like tips and tricks to like deal with gabriel as someone because malik is a protect two deck and as someone who's been playing protect two which is beatrice uh i i i know how how things can go wrong against a Gavriel player, for example. Uh, and the biggest thing that can go wrong as a Beatrice player is that when you have your ghosty units in the front row, by the way, guys, there's a good tip for you guys if you ever face this kind of stuff, if you're a Gavriel player and you're facing against Beatrice, Beatrice can go around the Hamiel turn very easily. However, once you start swinging at the rear guards, that's it. Those, that sucks because those rear guards aren't that high. They're like 18k bases. You can easily swing into them. And if you do, the Beatrice player loses the intercepts. However, in Malik, you can put the protect twos in the back row. And that way you could still intercept with the grade one and you actually lose literally none of your shield value. They can swing at the grade twos you have in the front, but they're just 5k's. But your back row interceptors are actually like 40k shields. So you can easily just guard a Hamiel turn if you just don't put the protect twos in the front, but put them in the back instead so that is something that we were testing and we figured out that against gavriel that's actually a technique that you can do so we were doing that and then we were testing other stuff so i was really happy to see him also i was really happy to see him going undefeated uh the only person he lost to is actually the duke player and then at top eight he lost to the rising nova spike brothers player and sadly that as, i think as he explained to me he bricked against the spike brothers player he just didn't see all his stuff so he just couldn't kill him but it's funny he was explaining to me that he actually killed him in top in the swiss rounds he just couldn't kill him in top eight so it was pretty fun it was pretty fun and then that's pretty much it uh we ended it there there is gonna be like a video um crow took a video of my deck list and then i'm actually gonna be making my own deck list i've actually been literally holding off on making a deck list on the deck i've been taking because of this i if you guys know or don't know i've actually been very successful with my prism highlander deck a lot recently i've been winning on vg top deck so you could check that out on wcc wcc sky stuff like it's over there i've been uh, in v premium but and that that's pretty much it that's the whole event 
Lawrence, thank you so much to Crow and uh, the people that have been helping Crow to keep the event going. Like, try it out. It, it is in Georgia. And if you are not around Georgia, of course, like if you're somewhere like in Washington or something in California, it's a little hard to get there, to get here, obviously. But if you're like a state nearby and you just, or if, if you're having issues with locals or if you don't have any locals, I highly recommend going to these. The people are insanely nice. The event is really fun. You literally get free stuff out of it. Um, he'll throw packs in your face. Uh, in top eight, we got like money and stuff like that, you know, all this stuff. And so I, I think it's worth it. I think even just to participate, it's really fun. You get to meet new people. You get to meet me. You get to meet Triple Sleep people. You get to meet really good players highly recommend it but that guys that's gonna be the end of this i really wanted to talk about this because i thought it was a really fun experience so i wanted to tell you guys about it tuned for whatever other future video i do I'm not really sure exactly what i'm gonna do yet i have some stuff plotting in my brain in my cranium over here see for everything uh for those of you guys participating participating in crow's nest or are watching this you should definitely leave a comment below and tell me how your experience was and, uh, or you know for the other people for the viewers where tell me how you did what your bracket was if you are watching this and you were at crow's nest real please, please feel free to to drop that below let other people know how how your rounds went versus how my rounds went all the kind of stuff it's been real it's been fun peace out that's vidani i'll see you guys next time bye